So you may have been told that type 2 diabetes is a chronic and progressive disease. Chronic means that it goes on for a long time and progressive means that your blood sugar will keep getting higher and higher every year. And if you're depending on drugs to treat your type 2 diabetes, that's exactly what's going to happen. Pre-diabetes will progress to full-blown diabetes. You'll need more and more drugs each year as your blood sugar goes up and up and up. The drugs become more and more expensive. And this is great news for the drug companies, but it's not so good for you. Fasting is an effective way to bring down your blood sugar, reverse your type 2 diabetes and pre-diabetes, and get off some, if not all, of your drugs. What happens when you fast? Fasting is not eating or drinking anything that contains calories for a certain period of time. And to understand how fasting can help with pre-diabetes and diabetes, you need to know what's going on in your body in these conditions. When you eat, your food is ultimately broken down into small chunks, glucose, fatty acids, amino acids, and these are absorbed into your blood. As your blood sugar goes up, your insulin levels also go up. Insulin tells your body to go into storage mode. So the sugar in your blood is first of all stored as glycogen in your liver and in your muscles. When these stores are full and you have excess sugar that you're not using immediately, this is turned into fat and stored in your fat cells. Your fatty acids that you're not using immediately are also stored in your fat cells. Your amino acids are used for repair and restoration. When you don't eat, everything starts working in reverse. Your insulin levels come down. The glycogen that was stored away for future use starts being broken down. When these stores start going down and become depleted, then and only then your body taps into the fats that you have stored in your fat cells. The problem is that over the years, we've spent more time filling up our fat stores than we have emptying them. So it's like filling up a bathtub or a bucket. You turn on the tap and you're filling up your tub. If you don't remove any water from that tub, the levels are going to keep getting higher and higher and higher. And eventually your bathtub is going to be so full that it overflows. And what happens? You'll have water everywhere. And this is what happens in your body. You keep eating foods that stimulate a lot of insulin production. So your insulin levels are always high. You're always in storage mode. And as your fat stores fill up, they get higher and higher and higher. At a point, they're so full that you can't stuff any more fat into those cells. So your body starts looking for other places to stuff this fat. So you store fat in your liver, you store fat in your pancreas, in your kidneys, in your muscles, in your viscera, that's around your intestines and all your intestinal organs. And fat is not supposed to be in these places. When you have fat in your liver, fat in your pancreas, fat in your kidneys, they don't work properly. They just can't do what they're supposed to do. And the fat inside your tummy, what we call visceral fat, that fat that's surrounding your organs, this fat produces toxins that are poisonous to your body and they increase insulin resistance, making your diabetes worse. So what's the solution? Stop eating. This way you can use up some of that fat that's stored in places where it's not supposed to be. So there are two problems you have in pre-diabetes and type 2 diabetes. That's insulin resistance and very high insulin levels. When you don't eat, your insulin levels come down. And seeing as your cells aren't being bombarded with insulin all the time, they gradually become more sensitive. And when this happens, your pre-diabetes, your type 2 diabetes is getting better. So what are some of the advantages of intermittent fasting to bring down blood sugar? First of all, it's free. You don't have to pay anyone to fast. You can do it by yourself. You don't have to buy any special bars or shakes or supplements. You just don't eat. Another advantage of using fasting to bring down blood sugar is that you can do it with any kind of diet. Whether you're vegan or low carb, it doesn't matter. You can also use your local diet, the kind of food that you're used to eating. You don't have to look for exotic vegetables and foodstuffs. Do it with what you're comfortable eating. Another great thing about fasting is that it's flexible. You choose when to fast and when to eat according to your own schedule. And when your schedule changes, you can change your fasting schedule as well. So what are some of the benefits you might expect to get from fasting? Fat loss, lower blood sugar, increased insulin sensitivity, improved gut health, increased energy, increased concentration and mental clarity, improved mood, 
and an improvement in fatty liver. There are lots of different ways to fast and I'll just mention a couple of them here. There's 16-8 time restricted eating where you fast for 16 hours and you eat for eight hours. There's OMAD, one meal a day, where you only eat one meal each day. There's 5-2 fasting, where you eat normally for five days and reduce your calories for two days each week. There's also alternate day fasting, where you eat one day and fast the next. And then there's prolonged fasting, where you fast usually for 48 hours or more. I'm going to concentrate on 16-8 time-restricted eating for bringing down blood sugar for two reasons. One, if you're just getting started with fasting, it's an easy way to get into the fasting lifestyle, especially if you want to gradually progress to longer fasts. And two, you can easily fit it into your lifestyle. In this kind of fasting, you take your day, which is 24 hours, and you divide it. So you take 16 hours of your 24 hours, you don't eat anything during that time, and that leaves you with eight hours during which you eat. So hence the 16, which is your fasting window, and eight, which is your eating window, and the two together add up to 24. That's 24 hours in a day. So for instance, you could start eating at 12 noon and eat until 8 p.m. So 12 to 8 p.m., that's eight hours. Then from 8 p.m., you wouldn't eat anything again until noon the next day. That would be 16 hours. So you've eaten for eight hours and fasted for 16. So how do you actually start fasting? If you're completely new to fasting, if you've not done it before, then I would suggest that you get into it gradually, slowly. This way you'll minimize the side effects, the adverse effects that you may get from fasting. And this will encourage you to help you to stick to it so that you can make it part of your lifestyle. If you have type 2 diabetes, you may have been encouraged to eat three meals a day and have lots of snacks in between. If that's your starting point, then for one week, you're going to eat just three meals, morning, afternoon, and night, no snacks in between. And you should try and stick to natural food because that will prepare you so that when you eventually start fasting, you won't be eating food in your eating window that will spike your blood sugar and make you feel hungry when you start fasting. In the second week, you'd restrict all your eating to a 12 hour window. So that means that if you finish eating at 8 p.m. at night, you won't eat anything again until 8 a.m. the next morning. And then you'd be able to eat until 8 p.m. in the evening again. So that's 12 hours of eating and 12 hours of fasting. And you do this for one week. In the third week, then you'd start narrowing the time during which you're eating and extending the time that you're fasting. So you can do this by shifting your breakfast by one hour every day. So if you usually have breakfast at, let's use 8 a.m. again, the first day you shift from 8 to 9 while maintaining your dinner time. The next day shift it from 9 to 10 and so on until you get to 16 hours of fasting. For some people, this isn't very practical. So you might try shifting your dinner time one hour earlier each day. If this still doesn't work for your work situation and your lifestyle, then you can just go ahead and skip breakfast, have an early lunch, and that will help to extend your fasting window. What should you be eating during your eating window? What you eat during this time is really important because it will affect how you feel when you're fasting. When you eat, focus on whole natural food, food that will keep you fuller for longer. And that means eating a lot of protein, a lot of fiber and natural fats. This would include vegetables, especially green leafy ones, and then fruits that won't spike your blood sugar too high. Things like berries, guava and passion fruit. Drink milk, yogurts, eat cream and butter, meat, chicken, fish, eggs, and then stick to legumes like beans, peas and lentils. Avoid foods like breakfast cereals and instant oatmeal. Sugar in any form, including honey and soft drinks. Foods made with white flour, like white bread, cakes, biscuits, pies and others. Avoid fruits like bananas, mangoes, pineapples and grapes. You can still eat rice, noodles, yams, potatoes, pasta, but reduce the quantities. What should you eat or drink while you're fasting? 
If you want to be really, really strict about the definition, the only thing that should be going into your mouth is water. But there are a few other things that you can take, especially if you're new to fasting, that can help you cope with hunger. So you can have black coffee or black tea, plain, or you can add one tablespoon of cream or milk, butter, coconut oil, ghee, or MCT oil if you start feeling hungry. You can also have green tea or herbal teas like peppermint tea, moringa tea. You can have some lime or lemon juice in water, either hot or cold. You can add two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar to a glass of water and drink that. You can also have some homemade broth or stock. That would be bones or meat or fish or above ground vegetables that are boiled and you drink the water from that. Avoid commercial pre-packaged stock and broths because they are full of all sorts of additives. And you might be asking how long does it take to reverse diabetes and pre-diabetes? This depends on a couple of things. Number one, how long have you had it? Number two, how high is your blood sugar? And number three, how old are you? So it's really different for everyone. For some people, they may accomplish that in six months. Some people may take up to a year, some people even more than that. And you can speed up the rate at which you reverse type two diabetes and prediabetes by introducing exercise into your lifestyle and by using a low carbohydrate diet. Now we come to a very important part of fasting when you have type two diabetes, and that is the medication that you're taking, the drugs you're taking to lower your blood sugar. And the drugs that were prescribed for you were prescribed based on your lifestyle, on your diet, on your blood sugar at that time. When you do anything to bring down your blood sugar by fasting, by changing your diet, by increasing your exercise levels, then you are changing that balance. So you have the same high level of drugs working on a lower blood sugar. And what's going to happen? The drugs are going to push your blood sugar so low that eventually you'll develop hypoglycemia. And hypoglycemia can push you into a coma. And that might be so severe, so bad that you don't wake up. Some drugs are more likely to cause severe hypoglycemia. These would include insulin and sulfonyl ureas like amaryl, dionyl, and diamicron. Some drugs are less likely to cause severe hypoglycemia. These would include metformin or glucophage, DPP-4 inhibitors like Genuvia, Galvus, and Trigenta, and SGLT2 inhibitors like Foxiga, Invocana, and Jardians. If you're in doubt about how much of your blood sugar medication you should be taking on a fasting day, it's better to lean towards taking less than taking more. A slightly higher blood sugar of eight to 10 millimoles per liter, that's about 140 to 180 milligrams per DL. This kind of blood sugar is acceptable, it's manageable in a situation where you're trying to avoid severe hypoglycemia from your drugs while you're fasting. And you should test your blood sugar two to four times a day, depending on the length of your fast to make sure that you're not developing hypoglycemia. Signs of hypoglycemia include palpitations where you can feel your heart pounding in your chest, shaking, sweating, dizziness, confusion, and extreme hunger. You need to be aware of these symptoms. You should have them in mind. And you need to tell your family, people around you, especially if you're fasting so that they can help out if you develop hypoglycemia. If you start having any of these symptoms, break the fast, eat something, drink something that has sugar in it. And in fact, even before you start the fast, you should have these things available in case you develop low blood sugar. And again, in terms of medication, fasting can lower your blood pressure over time. So at some point, you may need a review in your blood pressure medication to make sure that your blood pressure isn't dropping too low. You can take most other kinds of medications without any problems, but again, I would caution, you need to discuss anything that you're doing with your doctor in terms of making adjustments to your medication. There are some drugs you have to take with food, like metformin, iron tablets, and so on. And I'll give you a few suggestions about what to do in those situations and what to eat that won't mess up your fast too much. You can take two to three tablespoons of chia seeds and put that in water. And what happens is that it swells up and forms a kind of 
gelatinous kind of glue-like mass and you can take that with your drugs. You can also eat half an avocado. You could have a small bowl of salad, mostly greens. You could have a cup of bone broth with a tablespoon of ghee or butter or coconut oil. Another thing is that if there's a slow release or extended release version of the drug that you're taking, your doctor may be able to put you on that because then you'd probably only have to take it once a day instead of maybe twice or three times a day. Another thing you can do is that you can adjust your eating window depending on how long it is so that it can coincide with when you take your drugs. Side effects of fasting. You're more likely to have these if you jump straight into fasting without preparing first. You may have dizziness and headaches and the way to sort this out is to make sure that you're drinking lots of water especially if you're drinking coffee because coffee causes dehydration, causes you to lose more water. So you have to make sure that you're replenishing your water supplies. You can also take a pinch of salt and add that to a glass of water or to your tea or to your coffee and this will help with dizziness and headaches. If you're having muscle cramps, the salt will help with that and also taking magnesium can also help. If you're having constipation, you can try increasing the fiber content of your food by eating more vegetables, especially green leafy ones. You can try some psyllium husk in water, that will help. You can try some of these teas that have senna. A senna is a laxative and that can help to ease constipation. You can also try magnesium, particularly magnesium oxide, that helps with constipation as well. How do you break your fast? So you fasted for 16 hours and now you want to eat. What do you eat? You need to be careful with the first meal that breaks your fast because if you get it wrong, you end up feeling bloated and gassy for the rest of the day. During your fast, your body will have started adjusting more towards using fat for fuel rather than sugar. So the last thing you should do is to dump a whole load of sugar and starch into your system when your body isn't ready for it. It needs time to adjust. So to start with, your first meal shouldn't be too big. And second, you should eat more protein like fish, eggs, chicken, meat, and some vegetables. This kind of meal will stop your blood sugar from spiking too high while your body is still adjusting to burning glucose again. And to find out more about intermittent fasting and how to prevent blood sugar spikes when you're eating carbs, watch this next video.